Today we are looking at the Port Keys BM5 WR 5.5 inch monitor. Welcome back to the channel guys. Now you know that I don't do a ton of gear reviews, but today we are in the gear house and we are doing a gear review. Now Port Keys did send me this monitor, but this is my unbiased review. Um, I come from using a lot of small HD monitors uh, on set, but I needed to find a monitor that fit a couple different rigs that I use, mainly like the smaller compact ones as well as the gimbal one, which I'll show you later. And this monitor on paper kind of checked all of those boxes for me. It's super bright. It is 5.5 inch. I was looking for something a little smaller than seven inch to be again, a little bit more compact. Had SDI and HDMI loop through. And most importantly, it can control my camera. Those were a few of the specs that I did some research and I didn't see any other monitor doing and I wanted to kind of show you guys how I implement this monitor into my workflow and on some of my rigs. At first, when I received this monitor, I thought it was going to be completely plastic and kind of cheap feeling, but when I got it in the mail, I felt it, it had a little bit of weight to it, which was totally fine for me, and it was like a metal enclosure, which was really nice, and so that was a nice surprise for me to kind of see that it was not made of plastic and it wasn't a toy. There are some monitors that do feel like toys and that you can break them, but this one has a nice build quality where it feels durable. It doesn't feel like if you ding it on a wall or if you accidentally drop it, it's going to shatter and crack in a million places. Now, moving to the back and looking at some of the ports that you get, there's HDMI in, there's SDI in and out, there is an antenna for the wireless control, which we'll talk about later, uh, there is Limo to D-tap to power it, you can power it with an MPF, there's a headphone jack, there's a few function buttons on the top, which I really like, it's also touchscreen, it's also got a control port, which you can use if you don't want to control your camera wirelessly. It's got a quarter 20 on the top and the bottom. It's also got those little airy locating pin inset, so you can secure your monitor without it twisting and turning. As you can see on paper, and even looking at it first glance, this thing has everything that I can ever want. Again, I'm coming from using, you know, the industry standard type of monitors, uh, small HD, you got TV Logic, there's also a few other brands out there. So I'm using those monitors as a reference to kind of how I like this monitor. The added plus here is that I can control my cameras wirelessly. Now I own the Komodo, which is right here behind me. I also own a few Blackmagic cameras, and this camera can control not only those cameras, but a bunch more that are on the market. That's triggering start and stop. I can change shutter speed, I can change aperture, I can change um, focus even if I'm using automatic focus. It's pretty awesome. Now I'm not gonna go into all the different little software controls. I just wanna let you know that it has all the ones that you can need, and you can customize Customize it. The software is very similar to the small HD where it kind of has multiple pages of tools that you can use and you can customize which tools that you're using on which page. Um, so that automatically was all I really needed. I don't use every single tool in the book, but it's nice to know that I have all of them if I need them. Now navigating around the menu did take a little getting used to because I'm so used to the small HD operating systems, um, but again it's very similar and it took a little getting used to but it was still very easy. Um, it took me maybe a few hours just to really, you know, feel like second nature when I'm navigating around. So one of the things I wanted to do was compare this monitor to the small HD monitor that I use normally. Um, this one is a small HD Cine 7 with the built-in Teradek. Um, and it is, I believe, 1500 nit, uh, while this port keys is 2200 nit. But let's look at these side by side and just kind of look at the brightness of both of them. Make sure the brightness is there, that it's, you know, the advertising as it should be. Now, this monitor is super bright. As you can see right here next to the small HD, it is bright enough to see in the sunlight with its 2200 nit brightness. Um, it shouldn't be a problem. Now, there is some reflection that's you know, it's going to happen with its glossy finish, but it's totally acceptable for me. Now, I'll still be using my small HD Sydney 7 monitors on, you know, bigger sets where, you know, it has a built-in Teradex so I can, you know, feed an image out to my client monitors. Um, but when I'm doing a lot of my run and gun stuff or when I'm even traveling on vacation or, you know, doing stuff where I don't necessarily need a big monitor or I want to stay compact, this is the monitor that I'm going to use because it, it, again, it checks every box for me in order to get my job done efficiently. Let's take a look at a couple rigs that I use. The first rig is just, you know, a basic handheld compact. You're, you want to be a fly on the wall. Maybe you're doing an event. Maybe you're doing a run and gun type of shoot where, you know, you got to be light and nimble and fast and quick without 
making a big footprint. But again, I'm not sacrificing usability or functionality. I can still control my camera wirelessly. I can see it in bright sunlight. Um, I have a touch screen. It's all powered with one V-mount battery in the back with a D-tap. The other rig I use this on is when I'm running a gimbal. And I mostly run the RS2 in the Tilta Advanced Ring. Now with my gimbal rig, I'm adding a V-mount. Um, sometimes I'm adding a Terra deck. When you have that ring and you have all the accessories on it, it starts to get a lot heavier. Even if you have the single-handed gimbals, you want to kind of maintain a light form factor. I used to run the Cine 7 and a 7-inch monitor, but it was getting very heavy. So when I introduced the Tilta ring, um, it was already pretty heavy. So I wanted, again, to have a smaller monitor that wasn't massive that I can run on the gimbal and just kind of shave off all the weight I could that was necessary, again, without sacrificing functionality or usability. And this is where the wireless control comes in handy for me, um, especially on a gimbal, because a lot of times I'm operating the gimbal with either both hands and an easy rig. But when I want to go and stop the camera, the Komodo, you kind of have to reach around or kind of see on top on the, on the smaller LCD screen, which is not as bright, or it's on opposite side of the camera. Uh, but when you have the control right there on your monitor, you just tap right in front of you. You can change your white balance, you can change your aperture, you can start and stop the camera, and that is so huge for me. I can't tell you how many times it took me to kind of like reach my arm around and like tweak my wrist just to get to some of the buttons on the Komodo. So this is the perfect companion for not only my Komodo handheld, but my Komodo on gimbal. Now I've only been using this monitor for about a month or so, but I have a good feeling it's going to, I'm going to keep it, it's going to stay in my kit, and I'm gonna be using it for those smaller productions or those faster productions that I'm on where I need to be small. I hope you enjoyed this gear review of the Port Keys BM5WR here in the gear house. Um, I'm gonna to try to do more gear reviews as well as production breakdowns. Stay tuned for all that and more, and I will see you guys next time. God bless. Music